Monday, May 14th, regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Thank you all for being here. Um, can we have the roll call? Chairman Lennon? Here. Councilor Guvenali? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. <clears throat> Councilor Sherman? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. And Councilor Walsh? Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, town Council reports and correspondence. Seeing none, um, now is the time for citizens, uh, for an opportunity for citizens to speak to any item that is not on tonight's agenda. So if you're here to talk to us about something that we're not covering tonight, please come forward. Seeing none, um, town manager's report. I, I will follow the pattern, thank you. <laughs> okay, we are moving. Uh, minutes from April 9th and April 11th. Do I have a motion, Dave? I move to approve. Any comments or changes? Seeing none, all in favor? Seven zero. Um, item number 70, 2012, adoption of the municipal budget. Uh, we do have an opportunity for citizens, anyone who is here to speak on the budget. We have 15 minute time allotment. If anyone would like to speak on either the municipal or the school budget, you can come forward. Seeing none, um, do I have a motion? Frank, do you wanna? Yeah, I'll, Thank I'll you, I'll introduce, um, sorry about that, going too fast. Um, Sarah, I would, I would propose that we um, look at the individual bud the budget items and blocks uh, to be expeditious about it. And uh, if anyone has any objection to that, we can do it individually. But if we can handle the blocks, that'll be good. That sounds good to me. Okay. And uh, I guess first of all, uh, we have had um, between the, the town council and the um, schools, there have been a number of opportunities for public hearings, uh, as well as the opportunity uh, a minute ago. Um, so we appreciate input that we've received from the public on this. Secondly, I'd like to uh, thank all of those um, in the, um, for the town, who work for the town and schools for all the hard work they've put into creating this budget, which um, I think reflects both the uh, challenging economy we face as well as, as, well as the reality of um, needing to fund important activities for the schools and for the town. So thank you to department heads and everyone who worked so hard on this. So with that, um, I would propose that as set forth in our uh, agenda packet to uh, a motion to uh, adopt item 70, the uh, municipal budget, item 71, 2012, Cumberland County Assessment, item 72, 2012, approval of local homestead exemption funds, item 73, 2012, approval of community services, special funds budget, Item 74, 2012, uh, property tax levy limit. Second. I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Six to one. Item 75, 2012. Uh, Frank, I'll turn to you again. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish to recuse myself from the school budget wife is a teacher in the town, and I believe the town council should uh, decide on that recusal. But do we need a motion <coughs> to recuse you? I think we do. I move that we accept Council Walsh's recusal from the school budget vote. Second. Discussion? I'm willing to honor Jim's request. I'm not certain that I see this as a true reason for him to recuse himself from the vote, but I'll certainly vote in favor of the motion given his request. All those in favor? Thank you, Jim. Um, okay, Frank. Uh, I move that we adopt uh, item 75, 2012, the uh, school budget, as presented in our uh, agenda item tonight. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Five, two, one. 
Okay. Item number 76, 2012. Okay. Um, as presented in our uh, agenda packet, uh, I move to um, adopt item 76, 2012, proposed 2013 general fund budget summary. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Sorry, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> 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 Seven zero. Um, okay, items seventy seven through eighty four. Again, taking those in a block. Frank. Okay, so uh, taken as a block, uh, as presented in our agenda packet, I move that we uh, adopt item seventy seven through uh, eighty four. Um, there need to go through each one individually. We're okay. 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 Oh, I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. <laughs> well, that was very easy. Thank you all again. I, I extend thanks as well and echo all, all that Frank said for a smooth and awesome uh, process and product. So. Moving along, Steve. Uh, yes, uh, Chair Lennon. Uh, I would like to propose that the council take item number 93-2012, which relates both to the library and a proposed charter amendment out of order, uh, sensing that perhaps this may be an issue that has caused some folks to come out tonight. I thought it might be helpful to get to that issue next rather than waiting till the end of tonight's meeting. Thank you. I, I think that's an excellent idea. So I would make that motion. Okay. And I would second that. Great. Any discussion? No. Jessica? No. No, no. Gonna... All those... so, so what we're voting on is just to simply uh, change the agenda slightly to move the last item to discuss right now. Uh, all those in favor? 7-0. Okay. Great. So item number 93, 2012. Future workshop items. Dave, do you want to make a motion? Uh, sure, and if the council would just indulge me for a few minutes, uh, this issue has gotten a lot of attention uh, as it relates to the uh, uh, possibly a new library for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I see three issues intertwined with what's been set forth in our agenda tonight. One is referring the issue of a charter amendment uh, which would automatically trigger a citizen vote on any single capital expenditure approved by the council that, that is over a certain threshold cost. Uh, whether we ought to consider such a charter change seems to me appropriate to send to a council workshop, and we're tentatively looking at June 4th to do that, so that would be my first motion. Uh, my second motion is one that I probably won't support, given my prior statements about the issue, but there's been a lot of discussion about whether the, the new library project ought to go to a, a, a public vote as opposed to having the council decide. Uh, my uh, understanding in speaking with fellow council members is that there appears to be now a majority of the council that favors the referendum approach for a vote on the library, given what we anticipate to be the cost of that project. So my second motion would be that we refer that to a referendum, uh, simply because there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, 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 very thoughtful emails, but also a lot of folks who are quite upset about the issue, and since it appears that a majority of the council favors that approach, I'd rather get that issue out there and resolved uh, one way or the other than kind of keeping people in suspense about that. So that would be my second motion. My third motion would be that we refer what the language of that referendum vote or question would be to the same council workshop in June, because I don't think it's entirely clear exactly what we would be asking voters to approve. For example, what the cost might be for this new library or whether it would be a, a brand new facility or a renovation or a combination of both. So those would be the three motions that I would like to make and perhaps we could then vote on each one at a time if, if the rest of the folks on the council think that makes sense. I think it, go ahead, so Jim. Just, uh, Sarah, discussion on the three issues you just raised, or can we, should we wait for each of his? I think we should go through each, make a motion, okay. have a discussion, have a vote. Don't you think that for the sake of simplicity, otherwise yeah, we're going to be I, so confused about what we're doing? That's fine. Okay. Just, so, great. I just, 
I just thought it would be helpful to let folks know what I was thinking of before I started to do it in case okay. there was a, a real different sense of what we ought to be doing. So I'll make the first motion. Wait, I need Go to, ahead. Sorry, I'm going to pause you for a minute because uh, Mike has reminded me that, again, we have time for public comment um, for 15 minutes before every agenda item if anyone would like to speak on any three of these issues. So the library referendum, the language of the referendum, or the charter change. Seeing none, we'll proceed. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I would like to move that the council include as part of a June 4, 2012 workshop meeting a discussion of an amendment to the town charter which would automatically trigger a citizen vote on any single capital expenditure approved by the council that is over a certain threshold cost. Second. Discussion? Jessica? I'll second motion. Oh, Caitlin, oh, second. Caitlin, second it? Okay. Uh, discussion, Sarah. First of all, I, I applaud Council Chair uh, and also uh, Council Sherman for bringing this forward because the amount of misinformation that has come forward during this last couple of months about what the charter does allow or doesn't allow at the council level is very interesting. I mean, I, I had an email this week from somebody who's telling me that the Shore Road path went to a referendum in the community and voted for by the citizens. And then we've also gotten emails of people who have reminded us that the school addition went to a referendum <coughs> and we should be continuing that same methodology in any expenditure of this nature going forward. When statute requires the school to go to a referendum, and our charter doesn't in terms of the expenditure that we were contemplating. So I think the charter conversation is very apropos, especially in this climate, and I think one that I think will let citizens understand that they too have a vested interest in this government, and we as elected officials wish to really do the people's business. And I, I just applaud the effort to get this conversation in a workshop and then ultimately some either charter commission or whatever comes as a result of that to go to the next step. Anyone else? I, I, again, I'm not necessarily sure how I will feel about a charter change, but given all the feedback we've gotten, it's obviously important to me as an elected official and I think to the rest of the council that we have the discussion as Councillor Walsh has pointed out. So I look forward to it. Um, I, I think there's an expectation now among voters, frankly, that there will be votes on projects like this, so we need to address that. And just of note, of course, um, our workshop is public, so anyone can attend, uh, and we won't be deciding and voting then, we'll just be discussing it, and later, of course, if, should we choose to do it or do something, it will be followed up by a public hearing and a town council meeting and so forth. So this isn't, again, will not be just decided by the council. It'll be a process and it'll involve citizen input. So, no, yeah. Just one other question. Um, an important element of that discussion is going to be what the threshold is for a referendum. And I'm just thinking in, in terms of uh, us being prepared for a good discussion, a fruitful discussion, perhaps some kind of background information can be provided, whether it's comparison with other communities or, or something that will help further the discussion along so we're not just pushing the ball forward. Mm -hmm. If I may, I would echo that request. And uh, I did receive a phone call from a, a member of the council who was on the council about 10 years ago. And she said that they engaged in a similar conversation then and one possible threshold might be 0.05% of the, the total property tax assessment for the town of Cape Elizabeth. So those are the sorts of thresholds we might be looking at, mm -hmm. not necessarily a fixed dollar amount, but maybe a percentage. So that would then could be adjusted as property values go up or down. But again, these ideas have been around before, and hopefully we can bring them to a conclusion uh, as we go forward. And Michael, the assessment today is what, one8 Yes, 1. roughly. 8. It's yeah, it's been changing each year. So it's one. It's in that it's in that range. One, but what? One point eight billion. Billion. Okay. So, it's so. <laughs> Do the math. Have a calculator. How many zeros? <laughs> that would be nine hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it might be helpful to have several different benchmarks, like one a fixed number, one a percentage of that, maybe a percentage of something else, just just so we can discuss the merits. Anyway, all those in favor? Seven zero. Uh, okay, number two, Dave. 
and the next motion that I would make uh, is that the council forward, or, or actually that the council send the issue of the funding for a, a new or renovated library to the voters at the November 2012 general election. Okay. Sorry, can I tweak your motion? I'm not sure we're going to ask about funding. So maybe it should just be the issue of the library. I, I don't think we know what we want to ask and what will be most helpful. I, I'd accept that. Motion okay. Three. Tweak. Tweak. <laughs> yes. Tweak. Um, discussion? I'm going to vote against my own motion, but I think I've said enough. <laughs> I've, I've said enough, so I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> Thank you, David, for sorting all this out and making all the motions even when you don't agree. Yeah. Um, no, I'm. Thank you for the motion, even though you may oppose it, David. I think it's, a, uh, it's an important step, and it would be entirely consistent with our discussion of uh, a threshold for re referendums. And I think particularly with given the library, not only its, its uh, dollar amount, but the importance to the community in terms of its uh, central nature in our community, it's important to have this go to referendum. So, thank you. Sarah, going back two months ago to our workshop, and, and I think it's real important for people to understand that uh, that one thing was accomplished by the position we took at that time, and that, that, that this entire discussion about the library and about this renovation and the possibilities and the future of Cape Elizabeth has become much more, uh, shall we say, it's, in, it's been in the forefront of people's conversations. A lot of misinformation, uh, a lot of folks who just want to talk about the process, about this vote and about our ability to vote, whether we have the right to vote, um, but at least it's been discussed, and I've got to tell you, that's great. <laughs> I just believe at this point, the climate is such that um, it looks as though the referendum is the only way to, to put this in front of voters to get a serious involvement in, of everyone. And uh, again, I, I know that uh, David will vote against this. I feel um, as though... Uh, I was a voice in the wilderness a couple of years ago when it came to the Fort Williams Park. If you remember, I didn't think it should go back to, the, to referendum after the first referendum. But in this case, I've just listened to people who just, um, for whatever reason, have just not engaged themselves in understanding the, the seriousness of this renovation and the potential for long term doing something for Cape Elizabeth that I think is probably one of the most democratic things that is provided in a town, and that's a library, because it's for everyone. So I'm going to vote in favor of this, even though I strongly believe that we elected to do the business of our citizens, and I believe we were doing that. But I also believe that we're not uh, so, uh, so uh, shall we say, uh, caught up in our own elected positions to recognize that we have citizens who want to weigh in on this, we should allow that to take place. Jessica? Yeah, I, I've been struggling, struggling with this issue, of course, as, as most of you know. Um, in 2010, when uh, I came on the council, and some of us others did as well, the library was top on the list of facilities, it was the next facility that needed serious, serious consideration and work. Um, and as we all know, it has, there are severe problems. Um, and I'm going to support this because I've been very concerned at, as the waters have muddied, as the way I look at this on this issue, because it has taken away the the issue of what needs to be done and what that what the library needs and the, the issue has become who's going to approve this and how do we vote this and and it it just sort of mushroomed into this other issue and taking away from the merits I think and so I've been really really studying this very hard because it's been a real very big concern for me. And as you know, I'm not in favor of referendums in that I feel I was elected to, to do a job. We just approved, well, actually voted against it, <laughs> you know, $32 million, you know, between the town and school budgets. And, you know, those don't go, well, the school does by state law to referendum, but we do approve a lot of money. But in any case, um, given the economy, given the concerns, given the, the, uh, 
the uh, bruja that's taken place, um, I, th I think I'll support it because I want, the, I want the discussion to go back to the issue which is truly our library. And so there is a concerted effort underway for public outreach and education, and I am hoping that, that, this, that this process will then help people in town to truly understand what the problems are, and they are they're severe, and that we can address this so that our, our facility will serve our people. And so for those reasons, I'm going to support it. Thank you. Um, that is a perfect segue into my um, announcement that on May 31st, we are going to have a community conversation at 7 o'clock in this room about this very issue. And I just urge people um, to please come if you have any interest at all in this topic. It will not be a public hearing in that we'll sit up here and listen. We're going to be on the floor and it's going to be a conversation. It is not an information session in which we disseminate information to you. It's truly a conversation. We want to hear from as many people as we can. We want it to be a give and take. We really want as many minds on this as possible because we don't know going forward what to do. We want to know what kind of library you want. So um, again, I, I just want to wave a banner and say, please, anyone out there listening, try to attend on May 31st at 7 o'clock. I actually think it will be very interesting and very helpful. So with that. And Sarah, to that point, that, that will not be televised, correct? I don't know. From, will that be televised? Would it be like it televised yeah, yeah. or not? You would. Wait, just decide later. Do you think it should, probably should be televised? Should. I would say yeah. that was an, uh, an additional reason to come in case it wasn't televised. Yeah. So we'll try to arrange it. And, and then it can be replayed. Yeah, it should probably be televised. Yeah. So, all those in favor of David's motion? Opposed? 5 2. And the third of our item 93. Uh, yes, uh, I uh, would like to move that the council refer uh, what language it would actually go on the library referendum to a council workshop on June 4th, 2012. Seconded. Discussion? Well, I'm actually going to now go back to favoring my own motions <laughs> uh, because even though I don't like the, the process of a referendum, I think we should work together to come up with a language that makes the most sense. So um, I'm planning to support this motion. All those in favor? Zero. Thank you, David. That was very helpful. Okay, so now we're going back to um, our next item, which is 85 2012. But we have first a public hearing on the Fort Williams Park Master Plan amendments. Um, Bill and or Maureen, do you want to say? Or Bob? I'm sorry. Bill, Bob, Maureen, anybody want to talk at all before the. Well, uh, Sarah, we had, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, as okay the, scratch all that. That's okay. Jim, uh, as the ordinance Bill, chair. <laughs> Bill, yeah, Bill Nicholson is, uh, is chair of the Fort Wisdom Advisory uh, Commission as well, and uh, he's prepared to speak if we wish. But um, uh, this is um, one of our goals was to, uh, to um, amend the existing master plan, which we've been working on for some time now. There have been uh, ample opportunities for public comment throughout the process. Uh, with the help of uh, with Bob Malley and with uh, uh, Mitchell Associates, uh, we've uh, presented a master plan um, that uh, we, we feel very good about, uh, one that uh, really takes into consideration the, the long-term health of, of this incredible asset. So with, uh, with that as a backdrop, there has been uh, more than enough information out there. Um, if you do run one of these links off, it's 120 pages long. So instead of killing a few trees, I would suggest you just look at it online. But um, I, I bought, Bill is more than happy uh, to, to address any questions that come up. We have uh, other um, uh, interested uh, parties from Fort Williams and for uh, the Arboretum and other aspects of the park that certainly could address citizens' questions if they, they, they arise. So. Thank you. Um, so with that, I'll open the public hearing. OK. 
close the public hearing. Um, item 85, 2012, is there, Jim, do you mind giving the motion? Again, moving, um, I don't, we don't need to, Michael, there's no motion from this public hearing, is there not? No. Item, there's the, the draft language through okay. you, uh, met, uh, Sarah. There's the draft item in 85, and, and the, the findings that are here are specifically required findings that are contained in the, zo the zoning ordinance that you have to find in order to adopt these amendments. That's why it's laid out the way it is. Okay. And these uh, went in front of the planning board, um, who spent uh, a considerable amount of time studying them as well. Uh, you can see there, uh, the bullets there. I don't know whether you want me to read them or uh, it's really up to you, sir. Would you like me to read them? I think they should be part of your motion. Okay. I move that uh, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on, on Monday, May 14th, having received the recommendations from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board, you hereby find that the Fort Williams Park Master Plan 2011 update, as submitted on January 4th, 2012, contains plans for park, recreation, or cultural use consistent with long-term plans of the town for the use of Fort Williams Park. Proposed buildings or uses will not interfere with or detract from the park, recreational or cultural uses existing and anticipated during the period of such use. Propo proposed uses will be sensitive to and will not unduly impact the adjacent residential zone properties. And proposed uses will be consistent with the active recreational use of Ship Cove and with the passive recreational use of the remaining shoreline with Fort Williams Park and hereby adopts Fort Williams Park Master Plan 2011 update as an amendment to the Fort Williams Park Master Plan. If any inconsistencies exist between the Master Plan and the amendments, the amendments shall take precedence. Second. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> Again, I, I guess I'll just weigh in that I think that this has been a, an incredible effort on the part of volunteers throughout this community, um, right up through to the planning board and staff with Maureen and Michael's direction. Um, again, um, this is clearly a tremendous asset to the community, and this is just another step in protecting that. And uh, I'm pleased to have recommended it to you for vote tonight. Jim, thank you for all your work on it. And, and just there's thanks to so many people that I can't list them all, and I know I'll leave them out, but, but thank you to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. I know they did an enormous amount of work on this with Bill's uh, great leadership, and of course Maureen and Bob, and um, Mitchell Associates, which I think just did a beautiful job on the report and the drawings and recommendations, and the Arboretum Group that is so integrally involved in this and just works so, so hard. So thank you to all of you and, and, and the other people I may have missed. This has been a very big effort and I'm, I'm really excited about it, as I know we all are. I think it's a major step forward in these goals that we've been talking about for the fort for several years now. So thank you all so much. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. Okay. Uh, item 86. Again, a public hearing. Um, about the proposed new article to the conservation ordinance. Chapter 18 of the open space management. Jim, can I turn to you again since it's an ordinance <laughs> issue? <laughs> yeah, again, um, uh, the conservation ordinance, this was uh, presented to us um, to the uh, ordinance committee. And um, what you can see there, um, actually it's uh, stated below the open space management chapter 18 is um, is really what's being considered here. So um, um, I, I would defer to reading this aloud because it probably puts you all to sleep. Um, <laughs> I will say that the ordinance committee did conduct um, two meetings to discuss these um, uh, proposals that are in front of you. Um, these were um, a uh, the Open Space Management Committee, made up of the Conservation Commission and the Town Council, lays on Jessica Sullivan's work. The Town Council adopted a charge for the committee on April 12th in 2010, and that committee met 21 times to get to where we are today. 
Wow. Um, uh, the committee that I chair met two times in public, um, one at the beginning of the process, um, and then obviously um, subsequent to that voted on the decision to bring to you. Um, the, um, as part of our outreach, as part of our communication strategy, um, and we learned this lesson through our um, rooster experience, that we invited um, all interested parties to come talk to us. So we reached out for people, and as it turned out, the chair, uh, conservation chair, who happens to be here, I believe. Yes, thank you. Um, we asked, uh, asked him to join us, as well as Jessica, who was the liaison. Unfortunately, the chair could not come to see us, but Jessica did represent the group. Um, and again, um, one other piece of this is that rather than reinventing the wheel at the ordinance level, we took a lot of best practices from current open space management within the town, i.e., particularly Fort Williams Park. So there's a lot in here with the help of Maureen and her um, focus on trying to get it right with us. We've, uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, we've um, really taken a page out of that book. So in the end, um, the final piece that we added here was we, um, we adopted or we, we recommend to you, um, the town manager is included in parts or uh, portions of this. Um, we met with the town planner and selected appropriate sections from the policy section of the plan um, so that this conservation ordinance would then become something that we can actually um, implement. Um, it's like everything else, you can come up with grandiose ideas about how you intend to do this, but in reality, does it in fact, can it be, can it be implemented? And I think the town manager added a, a great sense of common sense to this uh, in the final analysis. So, so the open, open uh, hearing is to, to look at what we've got in front of you, but that's the history. And again, uh, thank you to Jessica and the team and your committee for the yeoman's work. Thank you. I, and I, I would echo that, that thanks to Garvin. Do you want to say anything? Certainly. Okay, so I think I'll open the public hearing and you can lead it off. Well, good evening. Uh, do you mind if I come up with No, please. Time? Thank you. Uh, good evening. Garvin Donegan, 12 Cranbrook Drive. Uh, Commission Chair, I'd just like to thank the council and uh, Council Sullivan as well. Um, and we do hope uh, we, being the Conservation Commission, encourage the town council to adopt. Uh, the open space management amendments. Uh, we feel quite strongly that the, uh, or the commission feels quite strongly that with the uh, site specific rules and uh, management plans, they really are critical for um, protecting and, pres and preserving our great open spaces and uh, green belt systems. Uh, further, we'd also like to make mention that we feel strongly that um, they will, these amendments will play a strong role in increasing public uh, access opportunities to not only our great outdoor spaces, but uh, the associated trail networks. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for all your hard work. Sure. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, I will close the public hearing and um, open up discussion. Let me make a motion. Uh, the motion is to amend the conservation ordinance, Cape Elizabeth Town Council having held a public hearing on Monday, April uh, 14th, 2000. It actually should be May 14th, 2012. Does hereby approve the addition of Article 5 to the conservation ordinance? And I would refer the Town Council to your information in today's packet uh, for you to read the details. And if there's any questions, Maureen is here as well. We could assist in answering any, any questions you might have or clarifications required. Second. I second. Discussion? Jessica? Well, I, I think that, um, that uh, the Ordinance Committee uh, has done a great job. The, the, the gist of the amendments is basically uh, to help steward group size and uh, and use of our open space. And uh, that, that's what uh, the town manager wanted to add to this through ordinance. And I th think it was a great idea. And the Conservation Commission was very receptive and that uh, thought it was a, a wonderful way to finish up the draft plan. And uh, highly appropriate and very thoughtful. 
Other discussion? Jim? Just want to thank David and uh, Kat, Kathy Ray for their participation in the ordinance committee because um, I think we've all gone, we've all been educated in, in an incredible way. Um, uh, because again, this is another one of the assets of this community that requires our stewardship, and this is a, a good example of, of that work. Yep. And one more thing, that this the the councils, I presume the council will accept, you know, accept the plan, and um, and just to echo Garvin's comments and to thank Maureen O'Meara and the members of the Conservation Commission. This was a two-year project, and it's a it's a very comprehensive document. And it was a delightful process and a labor of love. And, uh, and it really it was, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, I was sad to see it end in a way because it was pretty exciting and considering also that we have so much more coming up on the town website and with our grid of excessive, uh, accessibility and use and, and categorization of all the different types of open space that we have. and so. Everybody's pretty excited that this is going to be a great working um, part of our town website for years to come. So thank you again so very much to all the members of the Conservation Commission and the Open Space and Greenbelt Management Committee that worked so hard for two years on this. Just a quick observation. You adopted a budget earlier this evening, the Fort Williams Master Plan, and now these open space things. I was sitting here trying to calculate how many public meetings there's been between the school board, the council, <laughs> the finance committee, the conservation commission, the open space management committee, the conservation committee, the planning board, the Fulton's advisory committee. And I think I get up to about 65 meetings. And mm -hmm. somehow you've managed to cover what the work, 65 meetings with adoptions in about 40 minutes. So uh, the, the speed of this evening is, is not at all indicative of the, the length of time it took to get to the point of these issues. Uh, or maybe it is. They did such a great job. We, had not, we have nothing left to add or subtract. Uh, chair, I was about to say the exact same thing. Uh, all I know is when I was chair of the council, it seemed like it took us hours to get through very minor <laughs> issues. So I'm a little jealous. But uh, I think it's a testament to the great work that all these committees have done. Uh, by the time it got to us, there wasn't much more that we needed to do. So again, thank you to all the groups who worked on all of these initiatives. I think the goal is you vote against your own your own uh, motion. That's what you have to do. I hope you won't you won't continue that tradition here. No, no, no. I just think it, you know. I mean, when somebody says, "Gee, I, I, a labor of love," and I'm going to miss the 21 meetings that I attended. I mean, <laughs> Jessica, come on. <laughs> Dedicated counselors. Okay, all those in favor? Seven to zero. Okay, moving on. We are at. Item 87-2012, Open Space Management Plan. Jessica, do you put is that under the Ordinance Committee, or can we? Yes. Lost in my papers here. It's, it's on page 10. It's 87. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I move yeah. Yeah, that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby adopt the Open Space Management Plan dated 10-12-2011, including the management policies contained in the 11-1-11 draft. I'll second the motion. Conversation. Again, major thanks to you and everyone. All those in favor? 7-0. Item 88, 2012. This is the in-by-the-sea liquor license renewal. Um, there is 15 minutes. Sorry, in front of every item, if anyone's here to speak to this. No, okay. Is there a motion? There is a representative in here, should there be any questions? Okay. Should there be? Okay. Jessica? I move that we accept the In by the Sea Liquor License Renewal application. Seconded. Discussion or questions? It's accept mean the same thing as approve? I mean. Approve. Mm -hmm. Approve, okay. Seeing none, all in favor? 7 0. Item 89, 2012, approval of the warrant for the June 12th referendum election. Uh, okay. Um, does someone, Frank, you want to make a motion? Sure, why not? You've been covering uh, the long motions. Uh, move that we um, approve.
approve item 89 2012 uh, the warrant for a june 12 2012 referendum election um, which also include which is the school budget validation referendum do we need to read this to be official no okay second. i'll second the motion discussion yeah. In just for what it's worth, this is the same format of the validation vote that we have been using, I think, since we started voting on the school budget. You have the uh, yes, do you favor the school budget for the upcoming school year? No, you don't. And then there's an advisory question uh, if you want to weigh in on whether you believe the budget is too high, acceptable, or too low, you're invited to do that. And that is the format we've been using for the past several years. But you don't have to do the advisory. I think some people thought their vote would not be counted if they didn't circle one. That's entirely optional if you want to just give a little bit more information. Um, yeah. Sarah, this is the, um, uh, we, we, I think it was last year, the town voted to renew the voting by the community for the uh, school budget, correct? So this Overwhelmingly. Is the, so this is the second year of that three year period. Yeah. So just a, a point, this will be for Deb. Um, we just got to make sure that June 12th, that there's not a conflict in the parking lot for this vote, because that has been a problem in the past, where there's been many other venues that have been also booked on the same day using the same facility. And I know we've talked about it, but I just want to go on record that I'd like to see if there's some way we can make it easy enough for our voters to get in and out of there. This was made months ago and has already been made in November. The, the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice. the um, November election, there will be a workshop that day for at least students. Um, and again, for this election, I ask that they watch what else may be scheduled at the same time. So that concern has been passed along more than once. So hopefully. Okay. Great. Thank you. <coughs> Further discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Uh, item 90, 2012. This is the approval of the election officials. Um, do I have a motion? <coughs> Jim? I move that we, ex that Kate Elizabeth approves a recommendation of the town clerk for Sharon Gower to continue as warden, Jackie Coy and Deborah Lane to serve as deputy wardens. Um, and the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves the following list of residents who may be considered to serve as election clerks for the town of Cape Elizabeth. And I will defer to the list that you have in front, in front of you unless, Deb, you would like me to read the names. Second it. Discussion? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all the people that are on the list who volunteer their time or do this for us. And if there's anybody else interested in being an elected, you know, being one of the election, what is it the wording of clerks. it? Oh, clerks. Clerks or election. whatever. I know that they're also looking for, for new people to join in that. So if anybody's interested, you should seek that out. And just so this is a question for Deborah, if I may. How would one uh, express their interest? Would they come to you? Yep. Contact me and we can talk about what their interest is and what sort of their needs are. We can pull uh, residents that do not appear on this list. This is certainly a start and uh, we can add to that uh, during the year if necessary. Any other comments? All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, item 91, 2012. This is the annual approval of the alewife regulations. Do I have a motion? Caitlin, do you? <laughs> this seems to be uh, close to home for you, mm -hmm. shall sure. we say? That we approve the annual ally regulations Second. as they are. <laughs> Second motion. Do you have any helpful descriptions, opinions? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a few, but I haven't seen many. Discussion? All those in favor? 
Item 92, 2012, this is the Fort Williams Park use request from the Maine Historical Society, Historic Society um, to add to the others we already approved. Is there a motion? Tim? Michael, did, do you have an explanation as to a little background on this one? Or? Uh, I've read a little bit. I, do, I don't know. Is there anyone here from the group? There's a gentleman. Would you like to hear directly from him? That'd be great. 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 Thank you. Sounds like one. Hey there, I'm Steve Bromwich from Maine Historical Society. Uh, so this is a group from uh, Met, uh, Essex, Massachusetts that has a whole league down there that plays 19th century baseball games all summer. And periodically they travel to different parts. They've been up to Maine to Freeport before. And basically they'd come and they spend a couple hours. They'd play, um, they'd play baseball by 19th century rules. They dress up in the uniforms. They have a whole education and outreach program. So they'll come and they'll play. They'll bring two of their teams. They'll play a game. Then they'll have an opportunity to interact with kids and let the kids run the bases and ask questions. And then they'll play another game. So it's about four hours. Um, we get a lot, at Maine Historical Society, a lot of queries from reenactors of all stripes, and most of them, you know, are a little out there. But this looks like a really first-rate program. Um, for us, we think it's just a great way to kind of get people out having fun, thinking a lo little bit about history, um, celebrating um, baseball. You know, we thought about Deering Oaks Park, but then, you know, living here in Cape, we spend a lot of time at Fort Williams, and it just seems like an ideal location. It's there where the T-ball plays. So um, we're reaching out to a number of sponsors and partners. It's, it's going to be a pretty low-key event. I think we're going to have a, a, a very healthy turnout, but it's not going to be too carnival-esque. It's really about getting people to be out at the, the fort and watching the baseball. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Is it a fundraising event for the historical society? No, it would be free and open to the public. We're working to, um, the costs are pretty cheap. They'd, they're going to come up here without charging us because they want to be in the Portland area. Um, they're really committed to the education and outreach piece. So we're working um, with, a, looking for a number of sponsors to help um, offset the cost, but no, no charge to the public. Okay. Uh, and this may be a question for the town manager. Is there it contemplated then that the, there would be a group use fee attached to this event? that we need to figure out, or is that in the materials? Commission, the, there was discussion at the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, the Maine Historic Society asked the commission to consider waiving the usual group use fee. Some discussion followed about waiving the fee, uh, vendors and table booths, and the need for additional porta johns and to volunteers for parking. Commissioners agreed that the fee would not be waived and that the half-day group use fee would apply. Maine Historic Society agreed to work with Bob Malley to work out the details, process, and costs. It was moved to approve the request under those terms. All approved. Thank you. These things come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Thank you. It, sound, it does sound really fun. Okay, great. Well, so thank you. Thanks. All those in favor? We didn't issue a motion yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a motion? I just had a question. Um, so just, just to be clear, so the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has approved of this function recommending that uh, fees not be waived. Recommend that they be charged the half day group use free. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to move that we approve the uh, Maine Historic Society's request to use Fort Williams Park on June 30, 2012 for a 19th century baseball event. Second. Discussion? I hope to attend this. It sounds like a lot of fun. Do they have 19th century popcorn? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Okay, we already did item 93. So we have now, again, citizen opportunity for any discussion that was um, not on tonight's agenda, if you wish to come forward. Seeing none, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Thank you all very much.